Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for SAT. We have been solving SAT math problems out of this book here, the SAT Official Study Guide 2020. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today I will solve some problem that you will find on page number 744. Please turn to it. Always make sure the book is in front of you. Uh, numbers, page, number, page number 744. If at the end of the video you find this helpful and you decide that you would like to work with me, you can always get hold of me by sending me a simple email at kishwaniprep at icloud.com. Alright, let's take a look at number 29. There are only two problems on that page. Number 29, they've given an equation for circle. We're given four answer choices, obviously, four points in the answer choices, and our job is to locate the one that, that is outside the circle. So let's just draw a circle first. Let's just, let's just draw a circle first. The center of the circle, center of the circle is going to be negative 3, negative 3, and a positive 1. And the radius as you can clearly see is 5. So negative 3, positive 1 right here. Negative 3, positive 1. And since the radius is 5, we go 5 this way from negative 1, negative 3, negative 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, that's going to be 0, 1, and 2. This is one way of going about it. This is actually not a very efficient way. This is not a very, very, very fast way. This is obviously we're doing it geometrically. We can also solve the same problem algebraically, which we will also do in a second, and you will see that it, that goes much faster. But since I started this method, will I just finish it? So there are two ways you can go about it, either geometrically or algebraically. We'll do algebraic, uh, algebraic method in a second. So again, since the radius is 5, we go 5 units to the left from positive 1, we should end up at negative 4. Negative 4 and negative 3. So again, 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. We are at negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, this is our 0. What the hell am I talking about? I have no idea what I'm talking about. This is negative 3. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. This should be negative 8. Negative 8 and negative 3. Let's pick up the story. Let's go on the top. If we go on the top, the x coordinate is going to be the same. Still, it's going to be negative 3. But the y coordinate is going to be 5 more than that. 5 more than that is 6. It's going to be 6. So again, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So this is 1, this is 2, 3, so forth. If we go 5 units down, we should end up at this is positive 1, the y coordinate is positive 1, so this, this, this is 0, negative 1, 2, 3. It's just going to be, since this is, this is negative 3, since this is negative 3 and positive 1, I made it too, too complicated here. Since this is negative 3 and positive 1, if you go 5 units down, it's just going to be negative 4. Why don't I just put that instead of trying to label them? It, uh, that's where the thing get messed up. You just subtract 5 from that. Just understand that we're not sitting at 0. 0 is 1 unit down here somewhere. This is 0 right here. This is 0. And that, that is our center at negative 3 and a positive 1. Since y coordinate of this point is positive 1, you go 1 unit down to get to 0, and we go 4 more units and you get negative 4. 1, 2, 3, and 4. Enough of that. As you can see, it's taking too long. It is not something you want to do in a real exam, because it's very easy to make a mistake. So let's look at the first point, negative 3 and 7. Negative 3 and 7. A negative 3, a negative 7 and positive 3. A negative 7 and positive 3. Negative 7, as you can see, this is negative 8, so this is our negative 7. Negative 7 and positive 3, which is right here. This was 1. This point, the y coordinate of, this, of the center is 1, therefore we go 1 unit more, you get 2 and 3. That's what they were looking at. 3, 3 and positive 7. As you can see, it is all. it is all. It is, this is, it is well within, it is well within the circle. B says, 
negative 3 and positive 1, which is actually a very silly answer to give in the exam. Because of course, of course it's in the circle. Of course negative 3 and positive 1 is going to be in the circle. But that's the center. That's the center of the circle. Let's look at the origin, 0, 0. Let's look at the origin, shall we? This is where we have to pay attention. So x coordinate here is, is negative 3 of this point. So to get to 0, we get negative 2, negative 1, and 0 right there. Right there is labeled, is labeled quite clearly. And we can see, again, it is well within the circle that was point C. Well, if that's point C and that's point B and that's point A, answer has to be D. Whatever D is, lies outside it. 3, 2. Let's see where 3, 2 falls, shall we? So that's where we start at positive 2 x coordinate. So we go one unit, one unit here, as you can see, we are outside already. And then y coordinate is 2, which is right here. The point D clearly falls outside it. This is one way of going about it. It is not a very efficient way, as I already told you. Let's do it algebraically. You'll see how, how it goes. If we do it algebraically, we just substitute the coordinates of the points that are given to us. A gives us negative 3, negative 7 and positive 3. And we substitute back in there and you will see that when we substitute it, this quantity on the left hand side is going to be less than 25. If it is less than 25, it's inside the circle. If this quantity happens to be exactly equal to 25, it is on the circle. If this quantity on the left hand side is more than 25, it's outside the circle. That's what it is. So negative, negative 7. Negative 7 and a positive 3 is going to give us negative 4. Negative 4 squared plus 3 minus 2. This y coordinate is 3. 3 minus 2. 3 minus 1 is 2. 2 squared, as you can see, 16 plus 4 is less than 25. So that was A. That tells us that A falls within the circle. Now from the picture you can see here that A falls in the circle, but A is actually very close to the edge here. Whereas C is a little bit inside, which means when we get to C, the sum of these two quantity is going to be less than 20 because it's within the circle. B says, oh B is just the center, we're not going to do B. B is just the center, B is just negative 3 and positive 1. What happens when we put negative 3 positive 1, we put a negative 3 here, we get negative 3 and positive 3, we get 0 plus 0 of course. 0 plus 0 because it's right here. That's where the whole story starts. Let's look at C. C says 0, 0. So put in 0, 0. 0 plus 3 is 3. 3 squared is 9. And y minus 0 is just 0. 0 minus negative 1 is just negative 1. Negative 1 squared is just 1. As you can see, it's less than 25. But we also notice that this quantity was less than this one. And that's our cue that this quantity they're both within the circle, but this is much closer to this, much closer to the center of the circle than that one was. That one was very close to the edge. It's very close to the edge because it's 20. And the boundary is at 25. The answer is D. D, as we put in coordinates, as we put in the coordinates, we'll see that it is more than 25. And, and we don't have to do too much to realize that because x coordinate is 3. Right there, 3 plus 3 is going to give us 6. 6 squared is 36. And then this quantity is always positive because it's being squared and we're adding it to it because obviously this is already more than 36. And here we have 2. 2 minus 1 is 1. So we get 1 and that is more than 25. More than 25 means that it's outside the circle. That's all. Number 25, or number, number 30. Number 30 says that in 2012, we had a, we had a subscription of 5,600. And in 2013, we have a subscription of 5,880. And we expect the percentage increase from 2012 to 2013 to be double 
the percentage increase from 2013 to 2014. The reason, reason I went through the trouble of writing the whole thing down here on the blackboard, you'll see that it is the language that's going to throw some people off. The reason why is question number 30 on a scale of 1 through 30. There are only 30 multiple choice questions in this, in this section, which means the scale goes from 1 through 30. And on a scale of 1 through 30, this one is classified as number 30. And the reason is because they expect most people to get it wrong, and the most people will get it wrong. And they will get it wrong, not because the math is very complicated, but because of its language, the way it is written. I'll tell you what's going on in a second. So it says that we expect the percentage increase from 2013 to be double the percentage increase from 2013 to 2014. What they are trying to tell us is that, let's, let's speak in terms of this year and next year, let's, let's call this this year and let's call this one next year. What they are trying to say, say here is that next year, because usually when we are talking about the future event, that's when we use the word expect. We don't use the, usually use the word expect for something that has already happened. So what they actually mean to say here is that we expect that the next year, we expect that the next year, the subscription will increase by half as much. If, if, if this year, if the, if the percentage, whatever percentage increase that you had from 2012 and 2013 is double of what you expect to be next year, the next year, by logic, must be, we expect it to be about half the percentage of what we had this year. That's where it throws people off. It would have been much easier if, we had, if, if they had said, if they had said, There we go. This, this to me makes much more sense. We expect percentage increase next year. We expect percentage increase next year to be half the percentage increase we had this year. That's what they mean to say. So let's first figure out what, what did we have in terms of percentage increase this year. This year being this year being 2012 to 2013. We have the figures here. 2012 is 5,600. 2013 was 5,880. Minus 5,600. That's the difference of 280. Let's find out what 280 is as a percentage of 5,600. 5,600 was we started out with. Let's divide top and bottom by 10. If we divide top and bottom by 10, the zero is going to drop out. Let's divide top and bottom by 2. If we divide by 2, 28 becomes 14. 5 has two twos. Two twos are 4. After we take away 4 from the 5, we have a remainder of 1. 1 goes and joins the 6 and becomes 16 and 16 has 8 twos and 0 has no twos. So here we have 280. Let's just consider 28. Let's just consider on 28. 28 is 2 times 14. Let's divide top and bottom by 14. 14 is going to become 1. 28 becomes 2. And 0 has no 14. So we end up with 1 over 20. 1 over 20 is 5 percent. Which means next year we expect our subscription to go up by not 10%, not 10%, but 2.5%. Because what you will notice is that if you did make a mistake, if you misread it, as most people will, you will take 10% of the amount that we finished here, 5,880, 5, 5, 10%, 10% is 5,088. And you will simply add 5,088 to that amount. And that is the wrong answer. That's answer choice D, I believe. That is the wrong answer. It is not going up by 10%. Next year, we expect it to go up by half as much as what, we did, what it did this year. But instead of saying it that way, they said that we expect this year's percentage increase to be double the next year's percentage increase. You see the difference? So let's finish it up. We already, we already done. We know it went up by 5%, which means next year it's going to go by 2.5%. We have to find out what is two and a half percent of this amount. We know what we know what ten percent is. Ten percent is five eighty-eight. 
10 percent is 588 10 percent of that amount that is 5880 therefore 5 percent is going to be half as much 5 percent is going to be half as much in other words let's divide this quantity by 2 5 has two twos, two twos are 4, after we take away 4 from the 5, we have a remainder of 1, 1 goes and joins the 8 and becomes 18, 18 has 9 twos and 8 has 4 twos, voila. We don't want 5 percent, we want 2 and a half percent. So let's divide that by 2 again, 2 has 1 twos, 9 has 4 twos, 4 twos are 8, after we take away 8 from the 9, we have a remainder of 1, 1 goes and joins the 4, it becomes a 14 and 14 has 7 twos, voila. Now that's the two and a half. That's the two and a half percent increase, 147. If we add that to the amount that we finished, 5,880 will have the number of subscriptions we expect to have next year. That's the 12. Carry one. That's the 10. There you go. 6,027 is the answer. The answer is 6,027. The answer is B, not D. Let's do the next one, shall we? Number 31. We are in the grid in questions. Number 31. Number 31 says that gold is selling for $20, $20 per ounce. We also told that the value of gold We also told that the value of gold that we just found is 62,400. The question simply is, what must be the weight What must be the weight of our loot in pounds if that's the case? They are nice enough to tell us They are nice enough to tell us that 16 ounces make 1 pound. Let's see what we can do. So first thing first, if we take $62,400 and divide it by $20 per ounce, as you can see the dollars are going to drop out and the ounce is going to end up on the top. In other words, this quantity divided by this quantity tells us how many ounces we have. So let's do that, shall we? Let's divide top and bottom by 10. If we divide top and bottom by 10, the zero drops out. And now let's divide top and bottom by 2. We divide by 2. 6 has 3 twos, 2 has 1 twos, 4 has 2 twos, and 0 has no twos. There you go. 3,000. 3,120 ounces. How many pounds is that? Well, we know, we know 16 ounces. 16 ounces is 1 pound. Therefore, if you were to multiply that by 100, 1600 ounces should be 100 pounds and if you want to multiply that by 2 that is 3200 ounces 3200 ounces that's 200 pounds we don't have 3200 ounces we have 3120 ounces which is 80 less than that if we take away 80 from here if 16 if 16 ounces make one pound, then if you multiply that by five, 80 ounces should make five pounds. So if we take away 80 ounces from it, which is five pound, therefore 3,120 ounces make 195 pound. The answer is 195, because this is, if we had 80 more, if we had 80 more, that would have been exactly that would have been exactly 3200 ounces and that would have been exactly 200 pounds and since we don't have 80 more it's 195 ounces in other words 216 is 3200 if we take away 516 for it what we're left with is 195 16 that's the end of that question. I'm going to stop right here. We'll meet again tomorrow. We'll pick up from the next question on the same page. In the meantime, if you want to get hold of me, as I said before, send me an email. 
at kashwaniprep at icloud.com. Alright, bye now.